Jabbar. Jabbar. If Allah Azzawajal is addressing someone and saying, you are, a, you are Jabbar or something like that, it's in a negative sense. For Allah to be Jabbar, which means mighty, which means powerful, it is positive. But if the son of Adam becomes Jabbar, tries to become mighty, tries to become a tyrant or someone who's trying to exercise his power, then that is negative. When the Day of Judgment will actually come, Allah will put together, He will bring together all the seven heavens and the seven earths. Then He will say, An Allah, I am Allah. An Al Rahman, I am the most merciful. An Al, an -al Malik, I am the King. An Al Quddus, An Al Sanam, An Al Mu'min, An Al Muhaymin, An Al Aziz. And then in, in the end, He will say, An Al Jabbar, I am the Mighty One. An Al Mutakabbir, I am the One who has the right to show his greatness over others. I am the one who has started the creation of this world. When it was nothing. And Allah then follows on by saying, Where are the kings? Where are those mighty ones? A tyrant. A Jabbar on the earth. Namrud, you know, he, he said, okay, if God exists, then I'm going to fight that God. Here's another Jabbar of Tyre. So here comes Namrud, the Jabbar. And he says, okay, my army, he had a massive army. He said, okay, army, come together. We're going to take our um, arrows and we're going to shoot them straight in that sky from where the revelation comes to Ibrahim. And he got his whole army out. And he said, come on! You call yourself Allah, God? Well, if you're there, I challenge you. So this Jabbar challenged Al-Jabbar. The real Al-Jabbar. So he shot and he shot. And he said, come on, come, come. Come on, fight me. Where are you? So Allah Azawajal said, okay. <laughs> you in a fight? Allah sent down mosquitoes. <laughs> mosquitoes. <laughs> you know when a mosquito bites you, you're going to do I know. When these mosquitoes came, you know, what's all this? Hey, 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 hey. There's so many, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of them all over the place. The soldiers were running everywhere. We're running, running. All right? They're running. And Namrud, you know, he's also running. But what happens is, you know, this is what Allah does well. A mosquito's here, right? And, and he goes, he sniffs. And the mosquito goes into his nostril. And Allah makes that mosquito survive. So that mosquito is now alive and he's somewhere there. Inside his, his head and onto his brain, somewhere by his brain, right? And it's a lie. So now what happens is, <laughs> this, this Namrud, who's a tyrant on the earth, who wanted to challenge Allah, he's got a living mosquito inside him, and that mosquito is sucking blood. Every time he sucks blood, right? Every time he sucks blood, he needs some, he needs to, he whacks his head. He whacks his own head. And when he whacks his head, then the mosquito stops and he gets a bit of relief. When the mosquito gets hungry again, he sucks blood, he whacks his head. Then now he's getting tired of whacking himself. So he told his, his soldier, when I saw he said, hey, listen, stand next to me with this, with this club. You know, if you have a mosquito and you're trying to sleep, what's the sound of the mosquito? Right? This thing's in his head. So it's going, and he's going, ah, and he's going mad. So he's telling this guy, no, hit me. So he hits him. Oh, that's good. That's good. That's good. Then he, he rests for a little while. Then he says again, when the mosquito bolts, then he says, hit me. So he hits him. This soldier is standing there. He's hitting now the king. He's hitting the Namrud. That Namrud challenged Allah. So he's hitting that Namrud. Now he's hitting him. Now this soldier, now days are going by, and this, this, this king is going mad. He's going insane, he's buzzing sound, he's sucking out his blood. So this soldier got so sick, you know, the, so the soldiers 
holding this club and he has to hit him and he has to hit him and he's saying yeah he's tiring to do that right and each time he hits him the buzzing doesn't stop until he hits him a bit harder so now the, the wax are getting harder and this guy is taking a lot of blows in his head right because of this mosquito in the end the soldier thinks you know oh, that's enough man let me just give him one let me try to kill the mosquito so he whacks this king and by hitting him so hard, this guy collapsed on the ground and that Jabbar is dead on the ground. Walid bin Yazid ibn Abdul Malik was one of the kings in the past. He took the Quran one day, he was a tyrant king, and he took the Quran one day and he said, okay, let me look in the Quran and let me see, let me see what Allah you know, thinks of me. Let me just open the Quran anyway, and wherever my, my eyes fall onto whatever ayah, I, I can take it as a sign. Uh, Walid bin Yazid bin Abd Malik did that, and he looked at an ayah in the Quran, and it was, it was in Surah Ibrahim, verse number 15. Allah is saying that when my believers called on me, made dua to me, and I came to their rescue, then I crushed every tyrant and every stubborn one on the earth. When he read this, he said a poem. Billah, he said, what? Every tyrant, every stubborn one? Well, here I am. I am the tyrant. I am the stubborn one. Ida ma jitu, ida, ida ma jitu rabbak Billah, he said this. He said that when I come to your Lord on the day of, of resurrection, فَقُلْ يَا رَبِّي مَزَّقَنِ الْوَلِيدِ then you go and tell your Lord that Walid, he ripped your Lord apart. Now, this is a, this is a tyrant on the ground who's saying this about Allah Azza wa And they say that within days, within days he was killed. He was assassinated. And then they hung him. Within his palace they hung him. And his whole people saw his body, dead body, hung on the place of his palace that the people or his crowds could actually see him. And subhanAllah, when Allah wants to crush someone, he will crush someone. Harun used to be one who used to show off, you know, his keys, his keys. You know, your keys, you can keep your keys in a big treasure place, you know, you can secure them in a big safe. Harun had the might to make a massive safe and to lock his keys. But Qarun didn't want to do that. Qarun was Jabba, you know, he wanted to show his might, his power and flex his muscles. So what he did is, wherever he went, there were 10 strong men with, you know, we're talking about built men that could carry and lift. 10 of them followed him, just carrying his keys. They're finding it heavy to carry these keys. And their job was just to carry these keys, you know, ding, 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 ding. So what happens is that, you know, he's a, he's a big show off. He, whenever he comes uh, out, he never wears the same clothes again, right? And these are the most expensive clothes you can get. And so what he did one, and he had so many horses, he had so many of his own soldiers, so many bodyguards, so many palaces, so many treasures. You know, it's un unthinkable how much Allah had given him. So what happened is there was a day he chose his best clothing. Then he said, out of all his horses, he had hundreds of horses. So he went through his horses and said, that one there, the one that is the whitest horse, that people, when they look at it, they're going to say, wow. Yeah, they decorated that horse. They decorated him. So he got onto his horse. And then he said, you know, my soldiers, he wants the best of his soldiers. And they're going to march right behind him. Now there are those 10 men somewhere with, this, with all the keys, all right? And they, he said, you know what? He said, bring all my treasures out as well. Today, you know, I want to show them what I've got. So all my gold, my silver, my merchandise, my you know, things I've collected, I want you to bring them out, my soldiers to carry them, and they're going to be in there in a way that all people, when I pass by them, they're going to look gobsmacking at the amount of treasures I've got. So now this is not normal for a person to do. Who's controlling his heart? Come on, guys. Allah is controlling his heart. He's going to bring out his treasures. Which tyrant ever does that? 
which which tyrant you know which tyrant never does that but he's going to bring so he's brought and bring out all his treasures up so you can see my god the pearls and the rubies and the diamonds and the and the amount of gold and the different shapes and you you you, you know what happened when he came out in a parade he said i'm going to parade down the whole city and when he paraded the people looked at him and the people of this world yuridun al hayat al dunya the people who wanted this world, this, they liked to have this world, they said, they looked at all of this and they said, Ya Laita Lana Mithla Ma Utiya Qarun. If only we had been given what Qarun has been given, they wished for that. So Allah made them wish for it. So Allah, Allah brought all the people now. Imagine the whole city is here. The whole city is here. And the, all types of people, you've got the, you've got the Yuridun al Hayat al Dunya, the people who want, to, who want to gain this earth. And you've also got those people who, um, who are the people of, of knowledge, right? They said no. They said, what are, you know, the. وَقَالَ الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْعِلْمَ وَيْلَكُمْ They said, no, 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 what are you doing? Woe to you. Don't, don't, you know, ask for this. Whatever Allah has given it is enough. Whatever Allah has given is enough. Don't wish for whatever every, you know, they knew that he was a mutakabbir, he was an arrogant tyrant who, who thought that he was it. And he used to play with people, whatever games he wanted, because he had power, he had might. And the great uh, Fir'aun, he was, you know, he, he was his friend. Fir'aun was his friend. You know, the pharaohs, the whole, they were friends, you know, that basically if anyone touched him, he gonna tell his mate, Firaun, and you forget him. He, your history mate. He'll make you a slave if you has to. So no one messed with Qarun. This was the, you know, this was the ultimate tyrant that Allah took out as an example of Quran. So what happened is that when, when he came out, with all of this, and people were looking in amazement of how much he's got. People were on one side. And other people on another side, and right in between is his parade. And when he got to his highest, and he thought, wow, this is what I am. Wabidad. Suddenly, Allah Azza wa Jal told the earth, my earth swallowed him right now. Swallowed him in front of all these people. So the earth suddenly swallowed him, all his soldiers, all his keys, all his treasures, and even his palace behind, Allah swallowed that in the earth. All of it swallowed, all of them. The people were left there, right? Some people had run away, but then they thought, well, no, no, hang on a minute. It's just swallowed him, just his soldiers, just his palace. And then the earth came back together. As if nothing happened. And they were absolutely gobsmacked. And Allah showed them the people and Qarun who Al Jabbar is. A'udhu billahi min ash shaytan ar rajeem. Bismillah ar rahman ar rahim. Wa nazahna min shahida. فقلنا هاتوا برهانكم فعلموا أن الحق لله وضل عنهم ما كانوا يفترون وضل عنهم ما كانوا يفترون إن قارون كان من قوم فبغى عليهم وآتيناه من الكنوز ما إن مفاتحه ما إن مفاتحه لتنوء بالعصبة أولي القوة إذ قال له قومه لا تفرح إذ قال له قومه لا تفرح إذ قال له قومه لا تفرح إن الله لا يحب الفرحين وابتغ فيما آتاك الله الدار الآخرة ولا تنس نصيبك من الدنيا 
وأحسن كما أحسن الله إليك ولا تبغ الفساد في الأرض إن الله لا يحب المفسدين قال إنما أوتيته على علم عندي أولم يعلم أن الله قد أهلك من قبله من القرون أن الله قد أهلك من قبله من القرون من هو أشد منه قوة من هو أشد منه قوة وأكثر جمعا ولا يسأل عن ذنوبهم المجرمون فخرج على قومه في زينته قال الذين يريدون الحياة الدنيا يا ليت لنا يا ليت لنا مثل ما أوتي قارون إنه لذو حظ عظيم وقال الذين أوتوا العلم ويلكم ثواب الله خير ثواب الله خير لمن آمن وعمل صالحا ولا يلقاها إلا الصابرون فخسفنا به وبداره الأرض فما كان له من فئة ينصرونه من دون الله وما كان من المنتصرين وأصبح الذين تمنوا مكانه بالأمس يقولون يقولون ويك أن الله يبسط الرزق لمن يشاء من عباده ويقدر لولا أن من الله علينا لخسف بنا ويك أنه لا يفلح الكافرون تلك الدار الآخرة نجعلها للذين لا يريدون علوا في الأرض ولا فسادا والعاقبة للمتقين when they when they built the Titanic I don't know if you know this but when they built the Titanic and they're going to sail from Liverpool to New York and they're making this journey the one of the ones who made the Titanic said you know was 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 asked in an interview just before they left Liverpool he was he was asked you know do you think this this whole ship can actually sink in the in the ocean and you know what he said, this Jabbar, this tyrant said, he said that even if God wanted to sink it, he, he couldn't sink it. This is, this is in their the record, this is in their media, this is in, you dig it up, you find it. He said if, even if God wanted to sink it, he wouldn't be able to sink it. So they went. They went on this cruise liner, the ship, and they sailed across, and they got somewhere near to the you know on the Pacific side and you know it was night time they're all having a wonderful time on the ship these are the wealthiest people who can afford this can you imagine they're the wealthiest people who can afford this and the luxuries on this Titanic there is nothing like this in the world so what happened is this night time it's you know a head is a bit of mist Right, a head is missed, and they all know that in this freezing weather there can be icebergs that are, you know, very they're like mountains in the, on the, from the seabed that rise up. They know this, but Allah's got their hearts in His hand, so He makes the sailor of this ship say, "Nah, don't worry. Ah, you guys have a nice time. Don't worry. Yeah? Don't worry. Titanic." What's an iceberg going to do to Titanic? An iceberg. We'll break. I mean, he's thinking what? He's thinking, if I put, if I go ahead, I'll go slowly. But if I just go ahead, 
and if I hit an iceberg, this thing so big is going to break the tip of the iceberg. That's what went in his head. Allah made him believe that. So they went ahead in the night time and it, it came across and it hit. And you know, before he went ahead, some of his other sailors said to him, you know, it's not safe. I read about this. I read a whole article about this. They said to him, it's not safe. And he said, said don't worry. What can happen? Don't worry. Right? So he went ahead and it was a very sharp iceberg that they hit. They sliced into it. And then after a little while, you know, it's like they're still playing their music and they're enjoying themselves and some are asleep and whatever the chefs are cooking. <laughs> and the next minute they know, the sailor says, we're going down. They built this Titanic so strong that they believed that it couldn't snap. One of the theories was this type, it can't snap. You, and they believed that it couldn't be, you know, you couldn't take it down the ocean. So water started to come inside here. Okay? What's happening now is that it's getting heavy here, heavier and heavier. And this part of the boat, the other side of the boat, is now lifting. And it got so high that in the middle it snapped. When Allah gets a when Allah gets a tyrant on the earth, He's gonna make sure that people are around to talk about the story. And they live with a face of fear and humbleness to tell the story of what Allah did to them. They told stories to their children and their children told their st that story to their children and Allah showed them who Al-Jabbar is, who the real mighty one is. Where is that guy who made that statement now that even if God wanted to sink the ship, he, he couldn't even sink it? Where, where is that guy now? And this is Allah saying to all the rest of mankind, don't challenge me.